UFC Fight Night, Protez and Magni. Let's get right into it, Jim. Uh, please leave a comment and hit the like button. Helps the algorithm, helps us boost uh, boost our rankings on YouTube. You guys know, if you don't have a hot take, we're always going to provide you with a code word. Just put right in there. We found a good one. Boom! Yes. Not thank, the thank I, you, I, random I, word generator. Yeah. yeah, this was a great one. Uh, the boom guys, uh, Rizzler and like you know, uh, <laughs> big justice and all of them. But uh, yeah, we did the, the word generator, it comes up with boom, and I'm like, yes, I want to see that in the comment section. So type the word boom in there, token of appreciation, uh, for, for everything that we do. All right, so we're gonna get into these fights. Um, but Jim, just Give us your speech <laughs> about how to handle these fight cards at the end of the year. It's too important to not get an overall sense of what's going on. And you know really, really well this time of year what UFC is doing and why we need to be careful. I, I, I'm glad you said speech because it's starting to feel like a speech because I've had to say it over and over and over again. And I hate it because we're in the, in the business of predicting fights and betting on fights. and. But you say it best. Best way to not lose money or to make money is to not lose money. Best way to make money is to not lose it. You can lose a lot of money these days. The end of the year blues kill everybody where you're just trying to get it in. You're reaching, you're stretching. What's going on with the UFC? They are out of fighters. They are out of fighters. They're big name fighters. They're big draws. They have already paid them for the year. They've already had to pay them gates. They are not going to bring in gigantic fighters on random fight nights that they have to pay. What they are going to do is take the fighters that are on the last legs of their contracts, or they really don't see as future uh, champions or the people they can push. And they're going to use up those fights. Cause what have we seen from contender series? We already have guys fighting that were on this season, of contender series. It's cheaper. It's better. These guys, it's like throw out the old toys, bring in the new. Um, here's the thing though. You also have fighters who are fighting earlier than they wanted to. Some of them are out of money and they need to make some payday for the end of the year. There is an absolute ton that goes into booking these fights. That is way more than rankings or excitement value or selling a fight night card. And uh, it's nothing to sell. Okay. Uh, The apex makes its own money with the tickets for the prices they charge. They don't have to put great cards together, which has always been the critique of the apex. So be careful. You're going to hear a lot of, we don't like these fighters. We don't like this fight from now until January. Um, So don't get frustrated with it. Pick your spots, be smart. And the year in a positive note. If you find yourself asking like, well, which one of these fighters do you like? It's a stay away. Like Mm -hmm. it's an absolute stay away. So, Let's get into these fights, and sorry, guys, I know you're not going to like this. You're going to hear a lot of us saying, stay away. Mm-hmm. You don't want anything to do with it. This first fight, <laughs> Melissa Mullins and Claudia Segula. Jim, you go first, but I don't want anything to do with this one. What do you think? This is such a dart throw. It's a huge dart throw. We know nothing about Claudia other than she's not good. Okay? What we do know about Melissa Mullins is she's not good. <laughs> <laughs> um. We know that Claudia can grapple. We know Melissa can grapple. We also know that one of these girls could get finished if it's going to be a grappling contest because the only reason that fights have been ending recently has been submissions, and both of these girls could get a submission. Claudia's record is so fabricated. It is crazy, and it's to the point where I can't overlook it. I do not think that Melissa is a good fighter at all. But these mixed rule exhibition sort of MMA fights, I just, I'm not buying. You're not going to throw somebody into the deep end coming off of that that is going to just dominate somebody who's had fights in the UFC. So I actually like Melissa Mullins. Here's the problem. Everybody likes Melissa Mullins. She's minus 265. I will not be betting on Melissa Mullins at minus 265. Where I will be looking is the total. I have not bet it yet, and I probably won't. But I think somebody could get finished in this fight late. So you have to pick your poison. Do you want to take no distance, or do you want to take under two and a half? The under two and a half is plus 190. 
I would rather just take the distance and buy the last half round because I don't think Claudia has seen any resistance coming her way that if Mullins is legitimately the the UFC prospect, Claudia is going to be in deep, deep shit in round two and three. See, this is interesting because I look at this fight different. I want to live bet it. I want to see if Melissa Mullins' cardio is toast. I like Um, it. Like against Alex Siva on the ground, cardio was fine. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting fight, but Against Nora Cornhole, she gets around two and she's dusted. She's yeah. done. She she couldn't even compete. Gets knee to the body and she's out of there. Like, but she was winning. Mm-hmm. Um, Segula is going to be able to strike at distance. She's going to be able to piece her up. If Segula can get Melissa Mullins tired, like not get taken down, not like really get in the clinch and survive, man, my finger will be all over that live button if I see mm-hmm. Mullins start to gas like she did in the last one. Because Segula will act, she will absolutely. Be fresher in rounds two and three on the feet. Not great striking, but running around the outside, Mullins getting absolutely exhausted, can't land a takedown. Mm-hmm. Is there anything worse than when you have a wrestler who <laughs> goes for a, ta- a lazy takedown and is exhausted and can't get it? She's ripe to be beaten. So I'm looking at this as a live line uh, that I think I can get a good line on Segula the second that I see Mullins get uh, tired. So, Like you uh, said, we're going to say this a lot tonight. <laughs> We're going to disagree. We're going to like just see things different. And it's just a sign to just protect your bankroll. You only need one or two plays to profit off of this card. Uh, you mentioned, you mentioned they're pulling out guys that are at the end of their contract. Trey Sean Gore and Antonio Tricali. Uh, this is Tricali who won contender series in, in 2019. <laughs> This is Treshawn Gore. The last time we saw Treshawn Gore was 2022 when he was ripping Josh Frem's neck off. Mm-hmm. Um, again, what do you do with this fight? Uh, can we just put air quotes? Like, Tricoli, not good. Gore, not good. They're, they're <laughs> okay. both awful. Um, don't expect either of the, these guys to make good decisions. Um, you know what could be kind of fun here? Because these fights are going to be so bad and... and you know, we're trying to put the best show we can is let's just do a little breakdown here. Okay. You're not going to see good IQ from either guy. All right. You're not going to see high level striking from either guy. You're not going to see advanced wrestling from either guy. What you are going to see is that both of them are going to look lost when it comes to the technical aspects of MMA. So what can we bet on? We can bet on that Tricoli is probably a better physical specimen than Gore. Okay, that's great. I think Tricoli is only getting this spot, not only, but I think a big influence is the fact that he's buddied up with Mackenzie Dern, and he's getting this shot. Gore's two-year layoff was very much because of injury, which is a major red flag. It's not just off, it's yeah injury off. And we said this before. We said I said this with Kyle Machado. Is he lost the weight? And here's the problem. He didn't get any better. That whole camp was about getting down in weight. And he looked like the same person he was a weight class up. I think we're going to see the same Treshawn Gore. Now, Tricoli, I don't think is good enough to really take advantage of it. I actually like this fight to go the distance. I think this is going to be two bad fighters. And I don't think... After round two, either one of them are going to have cardio to finish. So I'm not worried about it late. To me, it's just got to get to the one and a half, and it's going way over. Hmm. Um, I'm going Treshawn Gore. Uh, it, they, they're just trying to eat up fights from Chikali. I think they just mm-hmm. kind of made him fight Shara, and he looked mm-hmm. awful. Uh, he was he was just terrible. Like, this is a guy that, like, has <laughs> just contender series 2019. He fights one time. And now they're making him fight twice in the span of a few months. He doesn't want to be there. I'll take Trish on Gore. I know he's I know he's hurt and he sucks, but I think Tricali's even worse. So uh Cody Stamen and uh Demond Blackshear. Who do you like in this one? I like Blackshear. This is this is one I actually do like. I like Blackshear. I think he's got more tools MMA wise. Cody Stamen, we've just seen is limited. And we just saw this last weekend with Mark uh, with um help me out here, Pedro Munoz. Yeah, physically, Cody Stamen is just limited. It's that simple. He's got little alligator arms, which is our same problem with Pedro. And we saw it again. Pedro swings all day long, 
and he just hits air because he can't close the distance. I think Blackshear is the much more dangerous grappler. Um, Stamen, even though he is a good wrestler and he has the cardio to go three, he doesn't have that like round three I've worn on you. I'm about to really push a heavy pace. Uh, I don't think that he gets finished. He probably has some ugly offensive clinch positions, but I think that the moments are going to come from Blackshear. Um, how many of Blackshear's fights have been short notice? Well, I, he's I had mean, a few, right? Yeah. So he did the, the, I, I'm pretty sure the Jose Johnson one, uh, was, was short notice. And mm-hmm. then, but Batista was right after that. Um, so when I, when I say like short notice, he was supposed to fight Brady. He stand. So then yes. he fights Jose Johnson and then he fights the next week. And yes. Barrio Batista beat the shit out of him, mm-hmm. but short notice. And then his fight against Montel Jackson lasted 18 seconds. He got his head blown off. Um, Which was it's, wild. It's, it's kind of hard to figure out like Blackshear. Like, what do you take from his fight? Kind of tough. Kind of tough. And th- these losses are people who have firepower, though. Hmm. Like, Cody Stamen is like bringing a knife to a gunfight. He doesn't have KO power. He doesn't have a dominant submission game. They just uh, There's nothing that Cody does that I think the mod's going to be afraid of. I don't care who wins. Fight goes the distance. Uh, you said it. Uh, Cody Stamen is like Pedro Munoz. Mm-hmm. Checks all the boxes for fight to go the diff- distance. He's tough. He's got decent enough cardio. He does not have KO power. So he's got these little alligator arms. He can wrestle, but he can't submit anybody. Mm-hmm. But he's good enough physically that I don't think Blackshear can like get him in a submission because Stamen's going to be active enough, and Blackshear's not knocking anybody out. So it's, it's Pedro Munoz 2.0. It's like, don't care who wins. It's a Cody Stamen fight. It's going to go the distance. That's all I, that's all I, I want from, from this fight. So uh, real quick, guys, um, uh, over at Wager Talk, Couple plays up for this weekend. We do have a four percent UFC best bet that is up, and we do have a four percent college football best bet that is up. So you got two four percent plays going off on Saturday. We always are honest with you guys. We go over our record: four hundred ninety-six wins, three hundred eighteen losses, for plus one hundred and sixty-two point one four units. So all access clients are doing doing very very well. We've been. We've been, this it's it's been a grind like the last month or so where it's just like mm-hmm. a few units here give a few back like a few units here a little bit more and so um we're closing in on that plus 175 units that would just be the dream if we could get to 175 units for the year when we started the year we wanted 100 units mm-hmm. now we're going for 175 great place to be jim great place to be so and shout out to you and shout out to corbin because all the plays have been fantastic i will also tell everybody um you guys have asked. Darts special is up. $49 gets you all darts plays. And yes, I've brought up to the art department that it looks like I got shot in the neck with three darts. Oh, God, it does. You didn't notice that? That's great. <laughs> I was like, I, I was like, does, does anyone think it looks like I get shot with three poisonous darts and I'm 10 seconds away from imminent death? Uh, awesome. But it's a hilar- <laughs> it's a hilarious picture. The more important thing is that we're 20 and nine mm-hmm. in darts plays. We got a big darts tournament this weekend and the world championships start in mid December. That is the bread and butter. That is the it's weeks of darts plays where you're getting the best value. You don't have to watch darts. We'll watch them for you. All you got to do is put the bets in and cash them. Uh, Corbin <laughs> is just absolutely fantastic at this. So uh, for forty nine dollars. You can get the rest you, of the year. You will make that back. Okay. Oh my Invest God. your 49. You will make it back the first tournament. I will okay? tell you, I, w- I would tell you, I was talking with Johnny, Ralph and Marco about this. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were like, they were like, Andy, you got to really like talk to him about darts. Like you got to explain that this is very different for people. And they were like, make it $99. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Someone was like 49. And I was like, I'll take it. Yep. And I, I don't think it, I don't think the other two were like like wait for, wait forty nine like <laughs> we're only making it forty nine take advantage of it guys betting on darts has been a cash cow it's under the radar and as you guys know that followed us under the radar is where we mm-hmm. make our money so go ahead and uh, grab that and uh, yes you're allowed to leave your comment about the picture of me getting shot in the neck with darts it's great all right Charles <laughs> Charles. <laughs> 
It's a great picture. It's awesome. Uh, Charles Radke and Matthew uh, Semmelsberger. The floor is yours because I like your take. I, I, this is one fight I do know your take on, and yeah. I like it. What is it? Yeah, yeah. I like Charlie Radke here. I'll say Amen. It. I'll start, okay, I like Charlie Radke. Here's why I like Charlie Radke. Can we go to Charlie, please? Of course. Charlie. Hi, Andy and Jim. Here's for Charles. <laughs> um, so Charlie Radke had the joy <laughs> – of fighting Carlos Prates in his last fight. Uh, he got his freaking liver sliced in half by a knee. It just totally outclassed. Look, it's Carlos Prates. All right? Let's be real here. He knocks out Goldberg Urbina, which at the time, great knockout. It, okay. it still is a good knockout. Gilbert is not great, knockout. but Radke handled his business. I'm not going to knock him for that win. That mm -hmm. was a Decisive win. Well done. People are still mad at Charlie for the Mike Mafetha fight, our blood diamond <laughs> fight. Okay. <laughs> Here's why. Because everybody had him by finish. Yeah. That's why you're mad. He went to enemy territory and he got a win over a hometown guy in his UFC debut. What the hell more do you guys want from someone? And then he cut a promo and put himself on the map. I was going to say, right. you know what I would like is a promo that offends a bunch of people. Well, we got that. Whenever whenever you get Daniel Cormier to just take the mic away and say, well, mm -hmm. thank you about leaving. <laughs> he did everything he was supposed to do that night. You guys can hate him because he didn't get the knockout. You can hate him because you don't like it. That man took his shot, and he made himself some money. <laughs> All right? Mm -hmm. um, if we go to Semmelsberger, and here's the big reason why I like Racky. Matthew Semmelsberger is 11 and 7. Had a lot of fights. Can you name me a Matthew Semmelsberger's fight where he doesn't look like he got run over by a train? So Win, the only loss. So, yeah. So, I, yeah, I will tell you this. So he had this really nice run here where he starts off as U.S. Uh, UFC, uh, Carl Myers, Jason Witt. Now we, we do now realize that knocking out Jason Witt was up. <laughs> he goes to the decision against Chaos Williams. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is the one where this Martin Sano, who Martin Sano was like, was like friends with whatever fighter, and they yes. needed somebody at the last second. Mm -hmm. Sano comes in, and not only is he not a UFC fighter, I don't think he's a fighter fighter. And Selma's burger just obliterates him. And we're like, oh, wow, look at that power. Well, as it turns out, that guy was like awful. Mm -hmm. AJ Fletcher, Jake Matthews, but he's getting beat by the likes of Alex Morano. Red flag. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, he gets knocked out in the third round. He gets medic because his cardio sucks. Uh -huh. And then he loses to Preston Parsons. I, I, yes. I'm, a, I'm a fade Selma's burger. This man has taken a ton of damage. And, and the thing is, is, it's not the – they're not violent fights. It's just if you touch him, his face blows up. It just does. I feel like every fight he's got one eye swollen. <laughs> like, and it's not an eye poke. It's just swollen shut. Um, he's another guy which drives me nuts is they have long hair and they don't braid it. They tie it back. It gets in their face. They're screwing with their hair the whole fight. Drives me up the wall. Never been a Matthew Semmelsberger fan. I think this is Charlie Racky getting back on the right track. I don't think this is a finish. I think Charlie Racky wins a decision because Semmelsberger is tough. OK, now we've seen Radke. He is willing to grind for those three rounds. You can get Radke a plus 175 to win by decision. We hmm. love the over in this. You got two tough guys. Jimmy Charlie Radke to win by decision. That's where I'm going with this fight. Moving on to uh, Zaleski and Zach Scrogan. This was my favorite over. of the. It's probably going to be my woulda, coulda, shoulda play Zaleski um, against Dalby. And sadly, uh, Dalby, you know, doesn't isn't able to make the make it. So I, I don't, whenever I have a bet, I really want or a fight. I really want to bet on and a fighter gets removed. I want nothing to do with it. So I have no input on this mm -hmm. fight whatsoever. Uh, I, don't even know, I, I, I don't know the first thing about Zach Scrogan. I really don't. Uh, we don't even know this fight's going to happen. This guy's right. still got to make weight on a week's notice. There's, there's no point in betting this again, live bet. All right. Watch and we see. Moving on. Uh -huh. uh, Cortavius Romius and Gaston Bolaños. Uh, we, when we watch Contender Series, we took notes on all the fighters that got contracts. We have extensive notes on Romius. What's your take? Goes the distance. Um, we're lockstep in this. I, I, Romius 
is just not great anywhere. He's not. And I've heard a lot of breakdowns talking about him. He looks like Tarzan, fights like Jane. Just really tries to swing and bite down. But the second the fight gets gritty, he resorts to wrestling. Not impressed with him. We were not impressed with him on a contender series. And the guy he fought on contender series to win was atrocious. Awful. Atrocious. Absolutely awful. Awful, 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 awful fighter. The guy has no business being here. I don't know why we signed him. I don't know why Dana was so in love with him. We were shocked the night that he did. And he talked Ramius up like he was really badass. There we I'll, go. <laughs> I'll, I'll read you our notes. Uh, mm -hmm. Here's what we said. He was okay. Dana said he was a freak athlete, but I don't think we saw the potential that Dana did. Mm -hmm. His opponent only wanted to be on the ground. If Ramius couldn't finish Michael and Prado, that's a problem in the UFC. Bam. That was our notes. Yep. Um, it gets harsher when we get to Malik. <laughs> so so uh, I'm with you over. I, I love the over on this one. Uh, Bolanos is like he got knocked out by Marcus McGee, that, but that was in round two. Marcus McGee would run through Romius. He just would. He's just oh. better. Um, so uh, Bolanos, striking defense, kind of non-existent. He's got some weird strikes from striking angles, mm -hmm. but in the end, I think both these guys are like sloppy enough to where I, I, I certainly don't see a submission. This, this, so when we're looking at overs, if you're like looking at guys and you're like, well, how do I narrow it down? These two guys, I'm just ruling out submissions. So now it's like, well, who's going to KO who? If Ramius couldn't get the finish against Michael Imperato, he ain't finishing Bolanos. He's just mm -hmm. not, unless he made a bunch of improvements. And Bolanos, I don't know. Does he get credit for <laughs> finishing Daniel Carey? <laughs> Bellator? <laughs> no. Not to me. Uh, this is one of those weird fights. New gloves. As soon as the scene gets out of the first round, just I'm not seeing a finish. So uh, I'm going to say it again. I don't care who wins, Jim. This fight goes the distance. I'm sir. By the way, I'm certainly not laying juice on Ramius. You're insane. no, no, You're insane. no, no, no. Uh, if you did that one, uh, Carolina Cole came to Denise e. Gomes. I don't care who wins. This fight goes the distance, Jim. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll if go. It, for, I'll if go it wasn't for that Denise e. Gomes flash knockout, man, we. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to be worried about that one. I, well, here's the thing. Uh, so her she, a great fight against uh, Duarte Bora was a, just a slug fest of a wrestling, grappling, just brutal split decision. Um, then you got to go back to So Angela Hill, she loses unanimous decision. She gets a knockout against Yasmin Worgi. Guess what? Old gloves. She's had two fights uh, since then. Both of them went the distance. Uh, knocked out Bruno Brazil, who sucks. Um, goes the distance against uh, Lock Bummy. Close to the scissors against uh, Rayanne Amanda. I, I, she Ew. ain't knocked. <laughs> Listen, Kova Kavitz is, you know, a little bit, a little bit past her prime, 39. Mm -hmm. I still think she's got gas in the tank. I don't think she's that bad. But here's the thing. She got worked over by Lucindo. And Lucindo, I'm telling, I'm calling, Lucindo is going to own the title. At some point in her career, Lucindo mm -hmm. is that good. She's going to be. She's pretty so, good. So look at, look at Kova Kavitz. Decis decision, decision, decision. Mm -hmm. Like it's, this is a decision fight waiting to happen and by the way don't be surprised if you're holding a gomes ticket and you're nervous in the third round mm -hmm. kova is a veteran she's been there like beat demopolis by decision demopolis wins decisions uh like has four in a row and who does she lose to lucindo we're gonna knock kova Kavitz for losing a decision to lucindo who's Young and up and coming and running through it. The line doesn't make any sense to me. If you're looking for an underdog, I think Cole Kavitz is more than a live dog as Gomes. I'm just not not sold on her overall game. But again, I'm looking at overs with these new gloves, and this fight absolutely checks all the, the boxes. What do you think? Well, look, new gloves or not, we found out that Yaregi is probably one of the chinnier girls in this division. Mm. Right? Her last fight, big parlay buster, big heavy favorite, gets knocked out again. It's a great point. Okay. I completely forgot about that. So, like, yeah, I, okay, her last knockout. She gets knocked out by Ketlin Souza, who is horrible. Yeah, yeah I mean, technically goes down to decision, but you're right. Just she but. got flattened. I know it's <laughs> I know it's a choke, but she got flattened before she got choked. Okay. Um, yeah, it's just bad, 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 bad. So here's what I'm worried about. You're 100 percent right. This line doesn't make sense. Not one bit. When we get to 39, 38-year-old fighters, could be something we don't know. 
if this is a retirement fight, mm. you don't know it, I'll be terrified. Mm. Terrified. Uh, there's been no word of it. We're going to watch press really close. If I have any kind of a hint or hear anything about KK wanting to hang it up after this fight, yeah, I got to be out. I got to be just out on this, okay? As far as a winner. Um, but yeah, it's going the distance. <laughs> yeah, of um, course it is. I, I get the plus money on KK. I agree. I think this is another one you watch live, round two. And if you have any thoughts that it's 1-1, one, one, I could uh, certainly see Carolina winning the third round. Yeah. Uh, Mansoor Abdul Malik versus Dusko Todorovic. Uh, do you want me to just go to our uh, notes from Malik? Oh, please Malik? do. Yeah, we please can do on Malik. Just jump right there. What's the first word? Fade. Mm -hmm. His opponent, Wes Schultz, isn't very good, but was able to have success striking and in some scrambles. He was tired at the end of the first, and the only reason he won was because Schultz's energy went completely away in the second. He's got good power, but there are holes all over his game. His cardio is the biggest. He's right to be beat in his UFC debut, depending on his opponent. Well, they certainly found an opponent mm -hmm. that has a lot of holes in his game. You got the, the onions to uh, take to Dorovich in this one? I'll tell you right now, if this night's going good and we get to this fight, I'm going to have both onions <laughs> to bet on Dusko, okay? A blooming onion. I'll have, have, a, have bloomin a blooming onion, onion to bet on Dusko. Uh, I'll especially ha be ready to rock at the end of round one. I mean, if, if Dusko is still there at the start of round two, isn't he the play? Absolutely. Malik's cardio is bad. Wes Schultz is a horrible fighter. Okay? <laughs> Wes Schultz is awful. <laughs> really, really, really bad. Like, really bad. That's the trend with this year's contender. There's a, a couple shining stars, but the overall skill gap from, you know, blew our socks off to bottom of the barrel is crazy. It's crazy. Um, we said many a times that BF, BFL prelims had better fighters than contender series this year. Some of these guys were bad. Uh, if this fight starts round two, I'm very interested in Dusko. Coming off the knee surgery, we don't know how he's going to look. Uh, again, I'm interested in the press. I want to see what we hear from the fighters. I want to see how everybody looks on the scale. But those jitters with Malik, I could see him going after the finish early. And then all of a sudden, there's a minute left in round one. And they end up back on the feet. And you just see, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> I got nothing left. Yeah. I'll, I'll go through Dusko's loss. So the knee injury against Leroy Duncan, he was losing that fight. Fine. Mm -hmm. uh, gets knocked out against Chitty. Yep. Somehow goes the distance against Gregory Rodriguez. Loses to Penali Soriano. I'm not a big fan of uh, Soriano, but I will tell you, the one thing that all four of those guys have in common is they murder mm -hmm. Salik. Like, absolutely run through Malik. Yes. Yeah. Just So this is Dusko who's beaten George Wright, Maki Patalo, Daquan Towson. Not good competition. Are those guys better than Malik? I don't know, but I, I there's no chance that I lay juice on this mm -hmm. one. This has this has disaster parlay buster written all over it. That's a spoiler alert for our parlay yep. buster at the end. So, uh, yeah, Dusko, uh, Dusko, a live bet. Yeah, if you if you get Malik who looks good in round one, and then you start to see those deep breaths at the end of round one, you are jumping in all over to Dorvich. The guy has been in the ring with some really good fighters. Mm -hmm. He's like Malik is going to offer him. Nothing that he hasn't seen before. Absolutely not. He's seen it all. Malik not going to offer up anything new. So I mean, look how sweaty Malik is in that picture, and that's like a regional MMA shot. Yeah, that right. Fight, that fight was probably forty-five seconds, and he's that sweaty. <laughs> that's the, the kind of cardio this man has. Uh, speaking of pictures, isn't this picture of Luana Pinheiro great? Just like, doesn't that just smell? I give up. Uh, <laughs> Like, can we get a good picture of Pinero? Yeah. yeah, yeah, get a picture of her quitting. All right, got it. Uh, Plenty of them. <laughs> yeah, Pinero and <laughs> Pinero and Julian Robertson. Uh, yeah, I already know your position on this. We're just trying to figure out how to make money off of Julian Robertson. Yes, I'll be yes. livid if I get out of this card without making money off of Julian Robertson. Correct. Correct. How do we do it? Um, this fight's not going the distance. Mm, okay. It's just not happening. It's not happening. Uh, we've seen Jillian, if for God forbid, some reason this stays on the feet and she is lost. Uh, Pinheiro can throw heat. Uh, but I think that's just going to wear Pinheiro out even more. Um, the question is, what round? 
And when will Pinheiro say, I've had enough? Uh-huh. That's what it comes down to. Enough. She got knocked out by Amanda Rebus. I mean, it's a bad look. Amanda's not known to have punching power. Her finishes will come from split. Uh, I still go back to this random Marcos up kick <laughs> where she just played. I mean, oh. she should be an actor, not a UFC fighter. Oh. Carried oh, to the back by her manager. Remember, <laughs> they put her in a stretcher out back because they're worried about neurological damage. And it was literally just a... <laughs> She got a punched little strike. Like, harder than, than that. In the yeah, break. the 50 punches you got hit with weren't as bad as that one little up kick. Give me a break. Um, and we've just seen, again, going on and on and on and on. This girl will quit, man. She will quit. Uh, Jillian is going to absolutely maul her if she gets in top position. It's a question of when she can do it because her takedowns are still not improving to the level that I would like to see them. And neither is her striking. So to me, it's round two and round three. I think that Pinheiro is going to have enough in round one. And Pinheiro might even initiate the ground grappling with her judo. She is a judo black belt. She will go for a judo throw, even though it'll be a horrible error to engage in the grappling. But if she ends up, ends up on top of Jillian, I could see her getting to the end of round one. So, I think it's going to be round two or three. I don't think the fight goes the distance. Minus 200, last I checked on fight, doesn't go the distance. I think Jillian taps this girl out in round two or three. When you get choked out by Angela Hill, that that's it. Like mm-hmm. uh, We watched that fight. We had the over because it was the Angela Hill fight. And we were yeah. like, we, you could see the moment Pinero quit. Mm-hmm. She was just like, I'm out of here. It's just so funny, like 14 and 8 and 11 and 3. But her last two losses, man, that's a that's a that's a – that's a person that I watched that didn't want to be in there. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's Jillian Robertson, maybe in like just inside the distance or a fabulous parlay piece. Size advantage for Robinson. Well, we don't say that much. Yeah. Motivation advantage mm-hmm. all over the place. Gerald Mearshart and uh, Rainier de Ritter. Interesting spot here with Ritter coming over. Mm-hmm. This guy's had a odd 17 and two career. Like it's just like fighting this guy. Uh, Molly Kinn, who's 50 pounds heavier than him. Mm-hmm. And just like, I don't know what to make of him. I will tell you this. I'm not fading Gerald Mearshart yet. I I can't. I just can't do it. Nope. You, you, does everyone realize he's won two in a row? Everyone. I don't think they do. Off. I don't think, like, if you would say, hey, what fighter on this card would stun you as two and O? Oh, like it would be Gerald Mearshart. He did what he had to do against Brian Bar- Barbarena, which is finished, finished, finished well. And then Edmund Shabazian, weather the storm, finish the guy on the ground. Um, I, I, I don't know what makes, I, I don't know what makes this guy a huge favorite over Mearshart, who is just the thorn in everyone's side, mm-hmm. including betters, which is probably why I stay away from it. I, I can't make the case for the to lay the juice on the. Or they're like, oh, like, well, it's striking. And it's like, Mearshart's been in there, done that with the strikers. Like, like all he needs is one chance. One chance where he slips his neck out. I, I don't know, man. You, you're not laying the juice on this one. I already know that. Hell no. Hell no. <laughs> uh, if we go to Mearshart for a second. Let's look and see who has finished Gerald Mearshart. Okay. Joe Pfeiffer. Finishes a lot of Finisher, guys. Right. Uh, he beats Bruno Silva, finishes him. Christoph Jocko can't finish him. He finishes Dustin Stolfitz. <laughs> yeah. He gets knocked out by Chemaev. Big whoop. But he Big finishes deal. Muradov and mm-hmm. Fabinski. And- yep. And you can keep going down here, man. He beats yeah, he- the Ron win, finishes him. Ian Heinish, guy has power, gets caught. Shit happens, right? Eric Anders can't finish him. Kevin Holland goes to a split. Yeah. Let's think about this for a second here. And let me ask you. Would you think UFC wants the one championship double champ to come in and win at 30 years old? What does Dana, <laughs> Dana say on contender? I'm not looking for 30 year olds. Yeah. I don't think they're looking for this guy. This guy had no one left to fight over there. He couldn't get fights. He even said it in his presser. Couldn't get fights. That's why he was a two division champ because he couldn't get fights in his weight class. <laughs> uh, he's had fights where guys have just straight up quit and given up. 
I love GM three in this spot. He's going to take the veteran approach. He's going to engage in the grappling. And there's a difference between high level MMA grappling and being a jujitsu ace. There's nothing that Renner can do that GM three has not seen before or taught or <laughs> performed himself. Yeah. So I like GM three in this spot here. I think he's going to make mincemeat of this kid on the ground and show him that there's levels to this grappling. He's just got to worry about getting clipped with something on the feet, but I don't think that's what's coming from Renner. Great live bet. Mm -hmm. Against round two, you probably could look at Amir Sharp, but yeah, I'm with you. Amir Sharp's the only play. Mm -hmm. Ricky Tercios and Bernardo Sopai. What's your take? I'm done with Ricky Tercios. Oh, wow. Done. I'm done. Said at the last fight, he just, this press conference, the guy seems out there. He's just white bread. He's boring. There's nothing that he does great. Everybody talks about his cardio, and that's great. But when you're in crap positions for three rounds, I really don't care how your cardio is. He can't stop a takedown. He just can't. This always ends up on his back. And we've seen him time and time again when he's on his back go for these submissions that haven't worked since 2010. Like, stop turning for an arm bar. Stop going for the triangle. It's not going to happen. All right? Uh Everybody's worried about the Sopage knockout from Oliveira. Kid's taking a good amount of time off. Okay. We're coming up on a while here. I think he is going to work, Tercios. I'll let you talk about the total because maybe you have an opinion on it. I like Sopage. I think he wins this by decision. And Turkey does enough to be not submitted or knocked out. But this could look like one way traffic. We, we could, I think we are going to see Sopage somewhere in the range of minus 800 in round two. All right, this is going to be great. I'm going to blow your you-know-what off. Let's go head-to-head. Head. Give me Tercios. Oh, this is cool. Uh, so, Pai, mm -hmm. this knockout against Oliveira, that's a change-your-life type of knockout. That is a um, I spent a few days in the hospital type of knockout. Um, against Oliveira, and Oliveira is – he fights cocky. He fights – He's got huge power, but he has no ability to set it up. Why? Because he's he thinks he's God's gift to fighting. So he throws very little volume in the first round. It gets better in the second round, and then it goes through the roof in the third round. Why? Because Sapai gets tired. Uh, I'm not worried about Tercios' cardio. What I'm worried about is Sapai not getting the best takedowns, Tercios getting up, and Sapai gets tired. Um, I think Tercios wears him down. This is such a wonky co-main event. Doesn't this scream? God, this is the co-main event. Jim, what are it's we the doing? Ricky Tercios is in the co-main. This 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 card stinks. It sets up for something absolutely <laughs> bonkers. Uh, I'm going Tercios as 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 an underdog. What has Sapai done done to warrant this kind of a favorite in the UFC? Getting his head mashed in and spending a two day two days in the hospital. No way. Uh, I think Sapai's cardio and durability is in question. And when you get knocked out that bad, to me, you're just ripe to get beat. So um, this will be a shot bet on the live show right here. Oh, I can't wait. Join us on mm -hmm. the live show. Um, we're going to get to the main event here. Uh, can we can we talk about the value of betting on the live show? Can we just tell people oh, that we please do? Okay. So please do. So I know we're going to, we're going to toot we'll, our own we'll, horns. We'll talk about when uh, it's important to get to, and when you miss it, what happens? <laughs> okay. So we do the live show. It's on the winning in the shadows, YouTube channel. It's mm -hmm. called takedown live. Every live show we're there. Uh, Jim and I pride ourselves on great live betting for UFC. I can't live bet many other sports. I, I'm h horrific at it. You put me in front of UFC live betting. We're good. Full disclosure. We had a 5% play on last card and we lost money on that. Mm -hmm. If you were with, us on the live show, it came out profitable. Mm -hmm. There were live spots all over the place. We got Jamie Lynn Horth at plus money yep. in the very first fight of the night. Bang. Cash a unit, two units. How you res uh, we were noticing fights were going over. Mike Malott was minus 140 to go over one and a half rounds. Smash spot because we see what's going on. Um, I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world to be ready to live bet on a Saturday night. I've missed some of the Saturday nights and I've regretted it. It literally cost me money. It's 
it's like not showing up for work and not getting paid for that day. And I'll let you tell the story from Saturday, <laughs> from Saturday, Jim. We really mean this because it's very, very profitable to be a part of the live mm-hmm. show. So I'll let you tell your experience from last Saturday when you missed the live show. Yeah, look, you, you don't want to let this get in the way of your life, okay, first of all. So well, there's I, certain things that you have to go to do. So a friend of mine had a two-year-old, his, his two-year-old had a birthday party, right? So we go to the birthday party. Already say I'm going to be late, right? We're there three hours longer than we were supposed to be there already. So I'm like, Andy, and I'm, I'm terrified because we have our 5% play going. Uh, big accident on the interstate. I end up not getting to the live stream till what? About probably 9 30, 10 o'clock. Yeah, there's only a few fights left. Like a few fights left. And I log in expecting the worst. The worst. Everybody's happy. <laughs> like, what did I miss? <laughs> We've been betting all night. <laughs> We're up. So, yes, live your life. Don't be stuck in front of a computer. Make your time. But if you treat your bankroll like an investment, these are opportunities that you cannot pass up on. Okay? We sit down and we watch 12 hours of NFL on Sundays. Right? Yep. You can spare four hours to watch UFC. And if you make two or three live bets and you hit them, it was worth your time. I will tell you there's going to be some great live bets on this mm-hmm. card. With, this as, wonky as, with yeah. as wonky as these fights are, these are the live mm-hmm. bets you want. You want somebody like Mansoor Abdul Malik to have an incredible round one, except yes. he gets tired at the end and he doesn't finish the Dorovich. Like, that's your live bet opportunity. Plus uh, 700 on Dusko. <laughs> yeah, th- those kind of lines. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You want Selmsberger to have a good round one, except we all know he's gassing in the second and third. <laughs> you want, like, they're all over the place. So please join us on that. Let's talk about the main event here. Uh, Neil Magny and Carlos Prates, our boy, Carlos, Carlos Prates. Uh, we were on Carlos Prates before everybody else was. Mm-hmm. We loved him on Contender Series. We deemed him the BMF of that season, and he is not disappointed. He's minus eight hundred. Um, I guess. I guess let's just tack it from another way. Make the case for Neil Magny. What's Neil Magny's path to victory? We know what Prates's path to victory is. Nuke Magny. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's Magny's path? Oh, simple. Get to round three. It's, there's nothing else to say. Get to round three. Uh, we have no idea, no idea about Carlos here. Okay. When this fight was first announced, we were all over Carlos and we went to bed, woke up and that line moved. What, what was, I, I think it was minus two. It was minus, yeah, it was Next like day minus, it was minus seven. Yeah. Now it's past minus 800. It's crazy. It's stupid. We love Carlos Pradas. You're not going to find two people that like Carlos Pradas more than myself and Andy. I am not laying this money line. And here's the other thing. I am not betting on Carlos Prades by KO TKO. Because mm. that just screams everybody trying to get off the money line and play a prop. And it's going to burn you. I don't want to be on that side. If Neil Magny gets it to the third, Carlos Prades' cardio could go to shit. We haven't seen him held down on his back for extended periods of time. And the fact is he hasn't fought anybody that's been able to. He got Radke out of there early enough to where it wasn't an issue. And if that fight got extended, we were going to have real questions because if Radke got a takedown and could stay on top of Pradas, it's going to be trouble. Does Carlos win this fight? Yes, I think so. But Neil, most certainly at this number, has a ton of value as far as his win probability after round three. What If he gets on top of Pradas in round four, he is in trouble, trouble, trouble. So I'm not betting this, but this is an, again, live bet if it goes long enough. If he nukes him, we miss out. Big deal. Yeah. I mean, we go to uh, Contender Series where he just looks amazing, plays with his food, mm-hmm. just crushes Ramirez. He looked terrible in the first round against Trevin Giles, and it just, it was very obvious nerves. And then once he got, once he just touched Giles with his death touch, it was over. Um, so I Charles Radke gets in the clinch. Bang. Uh Jingling, yeah. Like Li Jing Lang, kind of a little bit a little bit older. But you're right. This is this is five this is five rounds. Like Protest might be going for broke, and he probably should go for broke, because I gotta tell you, if he 
tries to point fight Neil Magny and he doesn't like unleash leg kicks and unleash, you know, big shots that damage him. Cause you know, Magny's legs are Magny, Magny's legs are so right to get, yeah, yeah. but I don't know if Protez got in there, but it, it, you're just a hundred percent right here about the longer that this fight goes, Magny, if he's not damaged up, he's going to be a live dog. Mm -hmm. Protez smokes a pack a day. I, I know <laughs> he does. Um, you're not wrong. I, 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 I know that like, well, well, you won't notice until later in life, but I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's the path to victory. Like I will not pre-bet Protez, but you better believe that I will have the live lines open. If Protez doesn't get him out of there in the first two rounds. Yeah. We could be looking at something like that. So no, I, th I think Neil's going to have to finish him is the mm. thing. If Neil's okay. going to win, like I can see Carlos winning round one, round two, most of round three with the damage, Neil might be, you know, down three zero going into four five. So at that point, if Carlos gasses and Neil wins the second half of round three, I think mm -hmm. Neil's going to have to go for the finish. And if he gets them out, I don't think Carlos is getting up. It's that simple. All right, let's do the uh, parlay buster. What's a big favorite that you think is uh, going to be a disaster? Mm. Let's see our options. Spread uh, down here a little bit. Mere short Renner. I'm not going to take the Malik. Uh, tough one, tough one, tough one, tough one, tough one. There you go. <laughs> Liza Zaleski. <laughs> Here's why. Here's why. I didn't expect this one. Wow. Here's why. Because I think everything else is pretty cut and dry. People know where we stand on, on all of this. <laughs> this fight was just announced three days before the fight. We don't know a damn thing about Zach Scroggin. Okay. <laughs> Not a damn thing. We know Eliza Zaleski is old and this is an opponent change. All right. Yeah. And look, Zach Scroggins from the Midwest. We've seen these fighters. They will come out and they will go for it. They will go. If he's from the Midwest, he has to have some kind of a wrestling background, you would think. So this just screams like, oh, let's fade the seven and oh short notice replacement. And then halfway through the fight, we realize that <laughs> Zaleski's ancient and he's getting wrestled. You know, for three. we find out this kid had a fight booked for like four month training camp and he's ready to rock, you know? So yeah, oh, yeah I'll, right. I'll take, I'm not betting this fight at all. And the reason is, so I'll take Zaleski. Oh, that's amazing. That's a good one. Um, all right, let's see. I will I'm just going to uh I'm going to uh Gerald Mearshart. I just uh, he can rip a submission out of anywhere. So give me give me Mearshart over Ritter. All right, what it could have shoulda. This is the segment where what are we gonna regret not laying the house on? Um, and we never recommend laying the house on. What are we going to just like walk away and be like, oh, my God, can you believe we let that one get away? So, well, what do you think is the obvious? Uh, the obvious one is going to be Jillian Robinson. And we're going to find a way to make money on Jillian Robinson. That we are. Mm -hmm. uh, but the specific method of victory is Jillian Robinson by submission at plus money. Hmm. Mm. Like, you're going to give me plus money again on Jillian Robinson by submission. Okay. Like, we'll put her in a parlay with something and go, why did we just take her by finish when Pinheiro is just like, you know what? That was seven minutes. I I've had enough. Okay. I, I, I got a dinner date. I got to go. Let's set this <laughs> And if you, uh, see, if you see her boyfriend walk out to the cage with her, fire away on Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Uh, I'm going to go. I, this could be a parlay buster as well. I'm going with... Uh, Dusko Torovich. Cool. I think, I think like we could walk away and be like, do you believe that we could have bet at plus money, a UFC mm -hmm. veteran against maybe <laughs> against a terrible like contender series guy that like the only reason he won was because his opponent gas worse than him. So He's up to 370. It's insanity. <laughs> it's insanity. It's insane. It's crazy. Maybe Malik, completely washes Todorovic in the first round and I look like a fool. But if Malik is exhausted at the end of the first round, this fight's still going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I just like Todorovic, his takedown defense is terrible. His chin, his, his durability is bad, but is Malik really that guy? I don't know. I 
can't, I can't get there. So, all right, guys, that is going to do it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget to hit the like button and use the uh, code word, which is boom. Type the word boom in the comment section. Love hearing your guys' uh, hot takes and what you guys think about this fight. So thanks very much. Good luck on your place, and we'll see everyone later. See you Saturday.